Hello and welcome to your feedback uh, video on your progression exam. As I said in class there, I can't complain too much. Uh, 10 on target, 2 above, 3 below. Um, but whenever I was marking it, it was the classic mistakes coming up. Uh, again, people not getting their timing right, rushing and therefore forgetting context. Uh, people not sewing in context enough, still thinking just using the business name or the product name, such as Ryanair or Flights was enough. And you really need to be more specific and unique. Okay, again, look at the exemplar report. Look through this mark scheme to realize that. And uh, the classic old mathematical formulas as well. And I also felt that some people didn't take the opportunity as much as they could have. You know, a little bit more harder work. Uh, maybe not could only have attained your target grade, you could have exceeded it. And that would give you great confidence to draw your line under theme 1 and theme 2. Uh, focus on the A2 units. Remember at the end of the day, in your exam in June 2017, it's based on all four uh, themes, all four modules. And if you don't know your stuff now, when will you? So I'll talk you through each question bit by bit here, nice and quickly. Uh, your first question. Uh, definition one was a brand. Again, it's a strange definition, hard one to define really, but it's all about identity, standing out, make yourself unique. Uh, examples always secure definition marks, that's why I get you to do it. And then niche, I think almost everyone got that one. Uh, but branding could have been answered a little bit better. Next question, demand supply curve overall, not very well answered. Uh, people didn't even get the basic marks of uh, axes. Uh, demand line going down, supply line going out, down, up, and uh, the basic equilibrium point. Uh, we're all capable of drawing that. You had drew, drew that, you would have got two marks. Uh, you have to ask yourself, think of your flow chart, what's happening here? Is it a business issue, therefore I'll shift my supply line, or is it a demand issue, therefore I'll shift my uh, consumer sorry, issue, therefore I'll shift my demand line. Uh, the effect of your hotel on that market, they're bringing more hotels, they're increasing supply to the market, it's a supply issue, shift your supply curve to the right. Some people try to be clever and shift both. Uh, don't do that, okay, just choose one uh, at the end of the day. Uh, the examiner isn't gonna reward you for being, uh, trying to be too smart. Um, next question, for Mark AO3, DSLE, quite well answered. Um, can't quite remember how the question was. Worded, let me look up here. Uh, use primary research. So, again, uh, that's quite a simple one, really. But you got to add specific, unique context here uh, feedback for rooms, cleanliness, quality. Then, again, got to get those context marks. Uh, next question says two factors cause decrease in demand. All those demand issues that affect demand again affect consumers. All of those kind of things like incomes, like substitutes, like complementary goods, all of those non price factors as well as price itself. Uh, again, any two of those, choose them and assess them. So, value it, flip it. Okay. Uh, so, decrease demand. You want it to be bad news, negative. And then say, on the other hand, actually, maybe consider the elasticity might be too bad or it's a niche or it'll be fine. Okay. Uh, to explain how. Uh, these kind of ones are marked. Uh, to get into level three, you need your two versus two, each of your points of context and explained. And then I have to ask myself about your quality of your points and your validity and have you explained them enough to give you full marks. Uh, to drop into level two, you have an unbalanced answer. Okay, you have two versus one, or you're missing context or explanation of some of your points. And then to drop into level one, you have no context at all, you're terrible. Uh, thankfully, no one dropped down that far. Lots of people dropped into level two and very easily they could have been into level three. Again, look at the exemplar answer for this, realize how you can add in context. I'd even advise you get a different color pen and write the words for example or such as and demonstrate to yourself how you could have attained that context mark. Okay, uh, more and more you guys are going to need to take ownership of your learning here. Uh, next question is your 10 mark A04. Uh, as you saw there in the mark uh, key, it's all about assessing the importance of flexible workforce. Uh, the difference here, you got an extra level, level four, has this person given a firm conclusion of supported judgment. 
Okay, again, two versus two, context and explained. Lots of people are defining, we don't need to define. You'll see definitions there in level one. You don't want to be in level one, okay? You want to be in level um, four. What's happened here? No idea, I give it that. Does that work? Yes, it does. Um, so again, no need to define, please. You're wasting your time. Everyone should be in level four. And uh, we don't need to define to be in level four. Again, flexible workforce, any two positives saying, uh, supporting that flexible workforce, kind of the business structure here, uh, flexibility, 24 hour turnover, you don't need people in the bar, people to clean. So that's quite important. And their demands going to vary as well. Okay, they're right by the airport. Um, so in the summer, they're going to need more workers. Again, context. Uh, it's just very easy to be context. Again, it's a skill, it's just something you got to clue into. Uh, this is something you got to sew into your answers, that extra little scaffolded area. Then your two error points saying, well, actually, it costs a lot of money to have flexible staff. It's a lot of training there, and they're going to be harder to motivate. It could be argued the whole zero hour contract issue, flexibility, topical issue. And then your uh, conclusion for that one. And that concluded section A based on theme one. Overall, section A was done very well, the best one out of the three, as you'd expect with theme one being the easiest theme. I think a couple of you guys revised really hard in theme one and just thought I'll wing it in theme two. Uh, so there's a big differential between theme one and theme two marks. Uh, question 2A, sales forecast again. Uh, topic some people just simply didn't know. So you're estimating uh, the value of future sales, your volume of sales, trying to get yourself organized and planning ahead here uh, for the whole future. Um, section B, based on theme two, was all about Britain loves biscuits. Um, question 2B, quite disappointed in this one, really. Formula figures answer, break even point formula, FSV. Uh, your top line fixed cost for the year, your bottom line selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. It's all in there. Some people kind of made the mistake between pounds and pennies. Just make sure you're all in one. Okay. Uh, if it's pounds in the top, it has to be pounds in the bottom. So uh, again, some people forgot to put the decimal point in there and made that mistake. And then your answer, one, three, two, two, three, two, if you round it up to a full number. Uh, again, if it's a decimal, normally we leave it at two decimal places, but you can't really have that with biscuits, pack of the biscuits. You either have one, uh, 132,231 or one, 132,232 packets. It's one or the other. Okay, again, FFA, formula figures, and the answer for that one. What's going on here? Right, and um, on to the next one. It was kind of a weird question. Um, doesn't really, shouldn't really come up in your actual exam. Just to give two examples. You have the March scheme, all you do is just state two uh, types of fixed costs. Some people went to town in this one and wrote and filled every line, and in reality, you just need two words rent, insurance, salaries, mortgage, uh, utility bills, fixed costs don't vary if I put. Didn't even need to define. Wouldn't worry too much about that one. You probably. Uh, you're definitely not going to see that type of question again in being two. And then your next one explained for marker, uh, DSLE, productivity. And again, you got to focus on the question that's asked here and how they might improve their productivity at their Sheffield uh, factory. So high, quite a lot of people clued into it, becoming more capital intensive here, investing in this here machinery. They can make a million Oreos, 24 hours. Okay, madness, million Oreos. And then explain that. Okay, now you've got to explain the benefit, remember you're not just stating points. Um, so again, that one could have been answered a little bit better. I think people were kind of stuck on time here, starting to rush, uh, possibly. And then your next question says two reasons why break even is useful. Quite a nice question, really. But again, you got to focus here. Fox's biscuits, why is it useful for them? So again, two agreeing points. Remember, margin of safety, you mentioned that term. Uh, you're going to show off your knowledge. Do what if analysis, you identify the break even point. Any two from those three would have been excellent points to make. Context of foxes and what's happening with their business scenario and explain in this, uh, they're in a competitive market, aren't they? So break even might help them. And then flip your points. 
Okay, uh, they're making lots of different products. That might be difficult. It's only a prediction. Uh, it's not a straight line. The assumptions of the system, the criticisms are break even, really. So that one should be an answered a lot better. It's quite a nice one to give you there. Uh, 2F uh, was assessed the importance uh, to this business, Mondadil. Uh, international of using internal finance and investing in a new production line. Uh, again, this one was overall poorly answered, I say. Uh, was the question all about internal finance versus external, basically? Okay, so your two agreeing points saying yes, internal is great, it's organic, uh, it's bit by bit, and you're not going to delete your control and you're not going to pay interest, all these agreeing points. Then your disagreeing points are kind of saying actually it's not everything. Uh, it's quite limited, it's quite slow, and uh, although they have loads of retained profits, something like 6 million, is it enough for their ambitions? Again, that's a very easy contextual route, and uh, kind of admitting in your conclusion that ultimately uh, they're going to need external finance if they want to match their growth plans in this very uh, dynamic market. Okay, so again, conclusion needed there for your 10 marker. Then you're into your section C, your 20 marker. Um, overall, judging wise, I think people's timing was decent enough. Uh, most people had a fair crack at this question, uh, which is good. I would have to apologize for the wording of it. Okay, in your exam, it'll be very clear. Remember, this is kind of a change they made halfway through the year. If we had to change our structure for this question, uh, they'd probably rephrase it to do Ryanair considering uh, cost plus or competitive pricing strategy. Which one would you recommend? And basically, if you read the case study, that's what it's kind of hinting towards. Uh, mark scheme wise, if you'd accept any two pricing strategies, some people chose penetration and some people, which people managed to get mixed up with skimming. Remember, skimming high price and then reduce penetration low price and increase. Make sure we're aware of our key terms, people. Uh, learn your glossary. And then some other people considered old psychological pricing. Any two strategies, really. Two agreeing points saying, yes, they're great uh, for cost plus, for example. And then two other points saying, actually, there's some limitations here. And then for competitive, you could say two agreeing points saying, yes, this would be great. And then two however points saying there's some things to consider there. So again, look for the mark scheme. Look through the example report for that one. Um, I say mostly uh, decent attempts here, really. Um, just remember context. If you are rushing, uh, less is more, really. Uh, focus on quality, not quantity, if you're stuck on time. Just give me one versus one for each pricing strategy. Overall, for our conclusions, though, our recommendations, it needs to be very, very clear and concise as to what you're going to recommend. Remember what a good conclusion is. You say in the short term, this is what would happen. In the long term, this is what would happen. Uh, I therefore recommend this strategy because I think cost plus is the bee's knees. And I definitely say don't do competitive because of this reason. So you not only have to embrace one strategy and highly recommend it, you have to disprove the other one. Okay. Um, so. Uh, you know what your task is now, reflect on it, do your targets on the front, look through all my annotations there, what you need to improve upon, okay? If this is your wake-up call, if this is your kick up the bum, use it, okay? Get on top of these two themes, can't emphasize that enough. Uh, you're going to have five, six weeks off in the summer, make the most of it, okay? And whenever we talk one-to-one, -one, I'll be very interested to see if my targets will match your targets. Okay, uh, access to exemplar answers there in this annotated mark scheme, they're all in the Dropbox. Make the most of this opportunity, the rest of the lesson. This double lesson is based on this. Okay, if you can get the most out of this exam, otherwise it's just a waste of time. You also have the uh, extension material in the PowerPoint where it actually digests some of the questions in a bit more, but also some research tasks to set the scene for the next bit of theme three that we're going to go into. We've also talked about the EU referendum today. That PowerPoint is on the Dropbox, so if that is catching your eye, then have a go at that one. All right, so uh, that's what you need to do. Off you go and do it.